Hi everyone, and welcome back to Think Science. Today, we are going to be talking about the next and last step in cellular respiration, the electron transport chain. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button below this video. As you can recall from our previous videos, cellular respiration is the process by which a cell takes a glucose molecule and converts it into ATP. This ATP can then be used to complete several life processes. The first step in cellular respiration is glycolysis, where the glucose molecule is converted into two pyruvate molecules. These two pyruvate molecules are then turned into acetyl-CoA. These acetyl-CoA molecules go through the Krebs cycle to generate six NADH molecules and two FADH2 molecules. NADH and FADH2 are very important and will be used to produce massive amounts of ADP through the process of oxidative phosphorylation. This process is taking place on the inner mitochondrial membrane shown here. This part is the inner membrane space and this is the mitochondrial matrix. Before we get into how NADH and FADH2 are transformed into ATP, Let's take a look at the complexes and other molecules that are involved in the process. Here we can see complexes 1 through 4 as well as ATP synthase. We also have two other molecules that are electron carriers embedded in the membrane. This is coenzyme Q and this molecule is cytochrome C. These four complexes are part of the electron transport chain and the ATP plays a role in chemiosmosis. This whole process as a whole is called oxidative phosphorylation. The way the electron transport chain works is it basically passes around electrons in order to form a proton gradient. The first thing that happens is the NADH molecule comes along and donates its electron to complex 1, becoming NAD+. By taking this electron, complex 1 becomes charged and pumps the protons that are in the mitochondrial matrix out into the intermembrane space. Complex 1 will then pass the electron to coenzyme Q, where the electron will wait until further instruction. Meanwhile, FADH2 will come along and donate its electron to complex 2, becoming FAD. Unlike complex 1, complex 2 does not have the ability to become charged, so it will pass its electron onto coenzyme Q. This makes coenzyme Q the common electron acceptor for both complex 1 and complex 2. Coenzyme Q will then pass these electrons to complex 3. Complex 3 will then become charged and pump the protons into the intermembrane space, just like we saw in complex 1. Complex 3 will then pass these electrons onto cytochrome C. Cytochrome C will pass these electrons onto complex 4, where complex 4 will become charged and pump protons into the intermembrane space, just like we have seen in complex 1 and complex 3. Complex 4 then passes the electrons to the final electron acceptor, which is oxygen. Oxygen will split into two oxygen ions, and then hydrogens are added to create two water molecules. This is the end of the electron transport chain. Now ADP comes along, and the ATP synthase will use the proton gradient to create ATP molecules. As we have been seeing, protons have accumulated in the intermembrane space. Because they are heavily concentrated there, the hydrogen molecules want to move down their concentration gradient. In order to get back into the mitochondrial matrix, these protons are going to flow through the ATP synthase. The ATP is going to turn and jam a phosphate group onto ADP, making ATP. The constant flow of these hydrogen ions is going to create a massive amount of ATP, as well as return the protons into the matrix so the electron transport chain can continue. For more biology content, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. If this video made sense to you, let us know and leave your questions in the comments and we will do our best to answer. As always, thank you for watching Think Science.